Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My. Praise your mighty name, Jesus. Such an awesome presence of God. Praise your mighty name. In this place tonight. Such a powerful Thank feeling. You, Praise God. I, 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 don't, I don't know if, if any of you feeling what I'm feeling. But the awesome presence of God is in this place tonight. It's almost to the point that I don't want to do nothing but fall on my knees and lift my hands toward heaven. In the presence that I feel tonight. Such an awesome God. Yes, he is. Such a powerful God. And we're standing in his presence tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory to the name of God. Glory to the name of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody ought to praise you tonight. Somebody ought to praise you tonight. Ah. Matiyada Bashiko Toyala la Bashika Tai. Or I have a friend that's sick and she's the best brother. Oh, hallelujah. Or even a mother. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Closer than a child. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. God have his way in this place tonight. Come on, God wants to do something. Somebody's tonight. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.
title of my message tonight is Going into the Holy of Holies. Going into the Holy of Holies. God instructed Moses in the building of the tabernacle. He instructed him to make a veil. That veil of the temple was that separating the holy place from the holy of holies. It separated the holy place from the holy of holies. It signified separation. It said none but the high priest could go past that veil. Him only on the atonement day or the day that he offered sacrifice for the sins of the people. You see, there was a fear even from that priest of going inside or behind that veil into that place of the Holy of Holies. Now many of them came and walked in the outer porch of that tabernacle in the outer place yet they dared not go behind the veil because it would cost them their life. So there was a fear mm -hmm. of going behind the veil. I'm afraid if we're not careful, there's still a fear in some of our hearts today to go as far as God wants us to go. There's a fear there, but there shouldn't be. We we we've, we've wandered around in the outer court. We went to that uh, uh, labor and we've washed. We went by the altar and we've repented. But then that, when it comes time to go into the Holy of Holies, there's a fear that's there. God, I'll go so far with you. I don't know about going on behind that veil. I don't know about going on into that place. Bible begins to tell us in the book of Hebrews, though. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 1, it says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. After the second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round by with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded to the tables of the covenant. And over the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Mercy seat was behind the veil. The mercy seat was behind the veil. That priest went in once a year on atonement day. And he would kill a lamb or, or sacrifice without a spot or blemish. Offer for the sins of the people. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God, but into the second with the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. In this next verse, the Holy Ghost. 
this signified that the way into the holiest of all was now yet made manifest. <clears throat> While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Which was a figure for the time in present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to conscience. We stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being calm and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In Matthew chapter 27. Verse 46. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of, the, some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. Straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar. He put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And the rest said, Let be it. Let us see whether Elias will come and save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple, that separation, that separation, that separation, only the high priest could go behind the veil. Only the high priest could go to the mercy seat. Only the high priest could come into the presence of God. The others had wandered so far, that would go so far, into that tabernacle, yet they were afraid to go any further. They couldn't go any further. That would cost them their life. So there was a fear. The veil, as Jesus cried out with a loud voice, and yielded up the ghost. Behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city that appeared unto many. Praise God. That veil, that veil that separated was torn in two. I have said the Holy Ghost was signified. Praise God. Praise God. It opened up a way that you and I could come into the presence of God. That we could come to that mercy seat. That we can enter into His presence. Yet we sometimes, if we're not careful, we remain in the outer court when God opened up the way. He sacrificed His blood. He sacrificed His life that you could come into the presence of God. He died that you might receive the Holy Ghost. Yes, it is. He paid the price. He opened up the way. He opened that veil and gave you an invitation to come on into my presence in the Holy of Holies. And some of us have stood on the edge and said, I've got his heart as the repentance. I've got as far as the baptism. And yet I've, I've looked over and peeked behind that curtain right. to see what was going on. But there still remains a fear. 
Some of you, there still remains a fear of going on into the Holy of Holies and receiving everything that God has got for you. But He wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, praise God. I'm not talking about the way some say that the Spirit of God comes in when you when you accept Jesus. That, that some of us say, I'm saying receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost as they did on the day of Pentecost when He came down where they were sitting and filled all the house. I'm talking about entering into that Holy of Holies. That place that He gave His life for to cause that veil to be torn in two and opened up a way for you and I. I begin to realize in these last days God's poured His Spirit out. I begin to realize that. And I'll tell you something else. I begin to realize I begin to realize that my ministry was to get as many people filled with the Holy Ghost as I possibly could. I can't do it. I can't do it. But I can try to show you the way into that place that Jesus wants you to be. Minister of the Holy Ghost. We got ministers of the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. The Bible said, Be not drunk with wine wherein is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Right. God don't want you wandering around in the outer courts of the tabernacle anymore, but He wants you to walk boldly into His presence All right. into the Holy of Holies and be filled with the Spirit. You talking about a life-changing experience? You talking about something that will give you power? You talking about something that will help you through the week? You're talking about something that will keep you. You're talking about something that will give you a desire to read God's Word and study God's Word. You're talking about something that will, that will have you uh, worshiping with joy. And all this time, all this time up until the crucifixion of Jesus, it was all behind the curtain. It was all behind the curtain. And only the high priest could go in there. You know, you know, you know, there is a, a teaching among the Hebrews. That when that priest went behind that veil. And he was right with God. When, you know, he'd done cleaned himself up and made himself right with God. And he went behind that veil. And the presence of God, he'd offer that sacrifice. That there was a communion between him and God. You know what the Hebrews call it? You know what they still call it today? A prayer language that only them and God could understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Behind that veil. Huh. They, they communicated each other behind, behind that veil. A prayer language. A prayer. Oh, Some of you are not getting this. But when Jesus opened up the way with that sacrifice, he opened up a way behind that curtain up to that mercy seat behind that veil when it was written where we could come into His presence and have a prayer language with Him. Oh, oh. <clears throat> and yet some say, well, I don't know if I want to go that far. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> You don't know what you're missing. 
Praise God. Praise God. He paid the price for this. He paid the price for this. Praise God. Praise God. You see, I I just just put it all out here. Our pride keeps us from receiving some blessings of God. Our pride keeps us from receiving a lot of times the best gift that was ever given to man. Our pride does. Because, oh, if I go that far, I may lose control and act foolish. <laughs> you might, but you've got to be willing to lose control. You've got to be willing to let it happen. Whatever you want to do with me, God, I'm your vessel. Whatever you want to do, I may get a little crazy, but that's all right. David said it's before God and I play. Right. Yes. Yeah. Y'all not feeling what I'm saying. Oh, I'm gonna get somebody I'm gonna get somebody up here standing beside me in here in a minute. Y'all keep on being quiet on me. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look here again in Hebrews. Hebrews is now may have wrote the tenth chapter, the twelfth verse. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, this man, yes. that man Christ Jesus, yes. mm-hmm. that priest Christ Jesus, that man Christ yes. Jesus. Offer the sacrifice. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Somebody was asking me. We, we, I went back in the Sunday school class this morning. You know, and, 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 and some of them were asking questions about the God here. Well, the Bible says that it pleased the Father that in Him, talking about Jesus Christ, should dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's only one body form you'll ever see of God. And that's the body of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, why? Because when He worked as the Father, it was Spirit. When He works as the Holy Ghost, it's Spirit. Spirit, Spirit. When He works as the Son, at one time it was flesh, blood, and bone. But after the sacrifice, He said it's flesh and bone. Flesh and bone is Spirit. Flesh and bone is Spirit. That's the difference of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Bible said these three are one. There's three operations of the Spirit. So when He sat down at the right hand of God, God is, the Bible said, God is a Spirit. And the Spirit of God is omnipresent. I mean, it's, it's everywhere all the time. That's how the flesh of Jesus Christ could say, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Because the presence of God was all over the place. And as he was hanging on that cross, Thank God. he Thank felt God. that spirit withdraw. Right. That flesh felt that spirit withdraw from him. And as it did, oh my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? So always remember when you read of the Father, his spirit. When you read of the Holy Ghost, it's spirit. When you read of Jesus, it's flesh and bone Mm -hmm. and spirit. (coughs) Praise God. Praise God. And it pleased the Father that in Him should dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Bodily form. Praise God. So, the right hand Anytime you read of the right hand, it represents the power of God. Jesus represented the power of God. He told His disciples, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. Praise God. One God. One Lord. One faith. One baptism.
from henceforth expect until his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where uh, remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Now look here. Having therefore, brethren, boldness, enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Having boldness. Having boldness. Having boldness. To enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and a living way which he had consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh his flesh was torn he was smitten and having a high priest over the house of God praise God praise God going into the holy of holies I'm glad that veil is not there no more. Amen. Amen. Right. I'm glad when I need a refreshing. I'm glad when I need a renewing. I'm glad when I need some assurance from God. Come on. Yeah. I don't have to stay in the outer court. Right. Yeah. I can go behind the veil. Yes. I can find the mercy seat. Right. I can come into the presence of God. Praise God and present my cause to Him. Quit. What's my advice to you? Quit standing in the outer court. There's a way opened up through the veil yes. that you can come into the presence of God. The Holy Ghost is signified. Praise God. Praise God. I, mm, I, mm, mm. So you. Praise God. I told you once and I hear one back and I'm still, I'm, still, I'm still that way. I'm still feeling that way. I'm not going to be satisfied till the Holy Ghost sweeps through this building yes. as it did on the day of Pentecost. And everyone is laying out. Making you a laugh, right. leaping for joy, and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because we're living in the last days. The Bible said, in the last days, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm looking for it to come. And it's nothing to fear. You know, a lot of people fear judgment from God. If I'm right with God, I don't even have to fear judgment. We fear, we fear, we fear a lot of things. Perfect love casts out fear. The Bible said He didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So why, why would you fear? walking further into the Spirit than you've ever been before. Why would you fear that? Into the presence of God. Why would you fear being filled with His Spirit? Why would you fear speaking in tongues? When it's the greatest gift a man Thank could ever Jesus. receive. Thank you, Why would you fear? Thank you, Jesus. Why do you not want it? Why? Somebody said, you're asking a hard question. <laughs> but there's an easy answer. It's a hard question, but there's an easy answer. 
You either want it or you don't. But why wouldn't you want it? Why? It makes me happy. Yes. Amen. It gives me joy. <coughs> Somebody said, Brother Wright, do I have to act like you know? <laughs> you don't. I ain't going to make you get that credit. I can't make you do anything. Listen, when the Spirit of God gets on you, you let Him fill you like He wants to. If you don't do nothing but sit there and cry, you let Him fill you like He wants to. God, see, there's one that's coming after me whose shoes I'm not even worthy to stoop down and unfasten. He's going to baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. Thank God. You stick a little fire to you and see how you act. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on now. A little fire gets on me. I may stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> But I'm going to move. <coughs> Fire of the Holy Ghost gets on you. You're going to do something. Amen. You're going to do something. Amen. So we might as well stop wandering around in the inner court and get on inside the Holy of Holies where God wants us to be. Right. Praise God. He wants you there. He paid the price for you to be there. He was not only was the high priest, but he was the sacrifice that the high priest offered. Right. Mm -hmm. By his own blood, he made a way for you and I to enter into the Holy of Holies. Praise God. And I'm not going to be satisfied till I see you filled. I'm not. I might well admit it. I might well be honest. I'm not going to be satisfied till I see you feel right. And I've seen a lot of you feel. And it thrills my heart. It thrills my heart. There's more I want to see feel. And when, I, when, when, when all of these get filled, I want more <coughs> to be in this house, to be filled with His Spirit. I want more than them doors be filled with the Spirit. I wish the whole world could experience the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It would change the world. It would change the world. You're talking about something that would change your life. Man came in last Sunday night, received the Holy Ghost. Excited all week, we talked. He said, Brother Wright, Brother Charles, he said, I've been trying to fast and I couldn't. <laughs> but he said, I'm fasting this week because I've got power. <laughs> I've got help. <laughs> Praise God. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. <clears throat> Praise God. Going into the Holy of Holies. Don't be afraid. When God puts it on you, one place, the question was asked, how long will you resist the Holy Ghost? When the Spirit of God gets on you, don't hold back. Worship Him. Praise Him. Don't be afraid of what those around you are going to say. Don't be ashamed of the Spirit of God in your life. Don't be ashamed of the Spirit of God coming upon you. Don't be ashamed of the Spirit of God filling you. Peter had to explain as the Holy Ghost fell and they gathered in to see what was going on. Some of them began to mock and say, these men are drunk. Peter said, no! They're not drunk as you suppose. He didn't say they were drunk. 
They were acting like drunk people. Kind of crazy. These are not drunk as she supposed, but this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Amen. Saying, Behold, it shall come to pass. I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. But you've got to go into the Holy of Holies. You've got to enter into the Holy of Holies. But Jesus has opened up the way. And that veil, that veil that separated you from the presence of God has been rent in two, has been torn in two. The Bible says from the top to the bottom. It's been torn in two that you could come into the presence of God. And that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Let's all stand. Praise God. Somebody said, Brother Wright, do I really have to have it? Well, it's like this. I'd rather have it and not need it. Need it and not have it. Maybe I ought to say that again. I want to be sure. I'd rather have it and not need it. As need it and not have it. Praise God. So I'm just going to make sure. There's a, there's a song, an old song. It says, Lord, let me feed your spirit one more time. Reassure me, Lord, that I am by. If I should ever doubt that you're going to bring me out, just let me feed your spirit one more time. When there's no place to go, and you think there's... You want to come for